Before social media gave us a fuller picture about what was happening in the world, it was an unfortunate fact that history would be written by the winners, and still is. This means that some events have been brought to the spotlight while many others have fallen through the cracks. It can be unnerving to realise how little we know about our own history, much of which we will likely never know because anyone who could tell us the truth is long dead. Here are five unsolved mysteries of World War I. Number five, who killed John Parr? John Parr went down in history as being among the first, if not actually the first, British citizen to be killed during the First World War. While we know that John was killed, we have no idea what actually happened to him. Parr was a young man from London who signed up to fight in the war when he was just 14. Like many at the time, he lied about his age in order to join the military and fight for king and country. He was to be deployed to northern France in 1914, where he would join a unit tasked with preventing the Germans from advancing through Belgium. The problem was that Pa had already gone missing by the time his comrades confronted the German troops. The British military would continue to claim that Pa was alive for several months before relenting and belatedly acknowledging his death in 1915. Parr had been a member of the reconnaissance team. They were tasked with riding bicycles through the war-torn countryside and delivering messages. One of his comrades claimed that Parr had been killed when the unit ran into the Germans in the lead-up to the Battle of Mons, the first major British engagement in the war. This story was supported by a then eight-year-old girl from Belgium. It said that the body of Pa was recovered and later buried by the Germans, but military and war researchers say the skirmish that supposedly killed Pa could not have happened as it was described by Pa's comrades. The Germans were well away from that area that the messengers were riding in, and there are absolutely no records of this encounter in any files, diaries, or journals from either the British or German forces. This leaves the possibility that the soldier was a victim of friendly fire. Perhaps the British and Belgian troops were so unfamiliar with one another that they mistook each other for Germans. The reality is that we'll likely never know just how John Parr died. His mother wrote letter after letter to the British military hoping to get some information regarding his death but she never got the closure that every mother deserves. Number four, the lost treasures of the Tsars. Russia was having problems, both with external enemies and internal insurgency, as the Great War rolled out. The internal problems would lead to the eventual execution of the Russian royal family. As threats from inside and outside the country loomed, it was decided that the majority of the Russian gold reserves around 73% would be moved to the interior to keep them safe. The gold was sent to Kazan from Petrograd, modern day St. Petersburg, and it was then dispersed from there. Unfortunately, no one knows for sure just where it ended up. Some people believe that the gold had been seized by Admiral Alexander Kolchak, who squandered the majority of the gold, if not all of it, in waging a desperate failure of a war against Lenin. Others claim that the gold was kept hidden in secret vaults across Siberia that have become lost to the ages. Another theory is that the entire hoard was buried in the forest near Kazan. The gold is said to be buried under the town of Omsk, near the capital of Kolchak, and which is supposedly built on a series of tunnels. Another theory is that the gold was just sunk to the bottom of Lake Baikal or it was buried near Zaklamino. There are endless theories about where the gold ended up. Another popular rumour is that the men who buried the gold were immediately executed when they were finished to ensure the location of the gold would stay secret. 
no one is sure which theory, if any, is true, and if the gold is still out there somewhere, buried throughout the terrain of Siberia. Number three, what happened to the crew of the Zabrina? The good ship Zabrina was a flat-bottom schooner built in 1873. The ship was passed around various owners until meeting an odd fate during the war in 1917. She was being used to ferry coal between Cornwall and France at the time. A journey which should have taken around 30 hours. Strangely, she turned up beached at Roselle Point in France on September the 17th with no crew. It seemed that everyone on the ship had mysteriously vanished without a trace. The French Coast Guard say that the ship was entirely undamaged when she was discovered. The table had been set for a meal, and there was nothing amiss in the captain's log. There was only one clue that there was anything wrong, outside of the missing crew, and that was a slightly tangled sail. Everything else was pristine and in good order. As you'd expect from any good mystery, there are lots of theories floating around about what may have happened to the ill-fated crew. One such theory suggests that the ship had been caught up in a storm and that the crew had washed overboard while attempting to secure the ship and get her through. This theory doesn't hold much weight when you consider that the ship had been found in the perfect condition it was. There would be some damage if it had been caught in a storm. There are other theories which suggest that the Sabrina was attacked by German U-boats, which were known to be sailing the English Channel and attacking supply ships such as the Sabrina. This idea doesn't hold up as the ship was clearly not torpedoes and the logbooks were retained intact. German commanders were known to seize the logbooks of ships they had destroyed as proof that the deed had been done. Another theory suggests that the Sabrina was much more than just a ship used to transport coal. Records discovered by local historians suggest that there was a total of 23 people on board the ship, which is almost four times the typical crew of just six. This suggests the Sabrina may have been used as a Q-boat, which is a merchant ship packed full of weapons designed to lure out U-boats and sink them. It would have been difficult for the Germans to torpedo the ship thanks to her flat bottom, which made it perfect for use as a Q-boat. Maybe something went wrong during a skirmish and a U-boat was able to get the advantage, with the Germans boarding the ship and capturing the crew, who then never made it home. This is an intriguing theory, but it's nothing more than guesswork. It's highly unlikely that the mystery of this World War I ghost ship will ever be solved. Number two, who killed the Red Baron? The Red Baron is arguably one of the most famous and infamous pilots in history. Even people that have never studied military history have heard of the legend of the Red Baron. He had 80 confirmed kills, with 21 of those happening in just one month, in April 1917. Manfred von Richthofen was more than just a target for the Allies. He was seen as the face of the enemy. The plane of the Red Baron was eventually shot down on April the 21st, 1918, but no one knows for sure exactly how it all happened. His body would later be recovered by Allied troops in France, and the Baron would be given a military burial with full honours. As the troops were honouring their slain enemy, many of them were also rushing to take credit for having killed him in the first place. There are still many theories about who exactly fired the shots that finally brought down the Red Baron. A squadron serving under the Australian Flying Corps claimed to have engaged the Baron, but it's now believed that they were actually just fighting other planes and pilots from the Baron's unit. Another theory says that the world's greatest airman was never actually shot down by a plane, but rather he was shot down from the ground. Even this story has several different versions as no one can confirm for sure what happened. Some say that the plane was brought down by an Australian anti-aircraft battery, while others claim that it was an anonymous rifleman who got lucky, and yet others believe that he was brought down by a ground-based machine gun crew. The credit for his demise would officially be given to a Canadian captain, Roy Brown of the RAF's number 209 squadron. Even so, 
Critics argue that Captain Brown's account of what happened is lacking in detail, and that eyewitness accounts indicate that while he and the Baron did do battle, their skirmish came to an end before the Baron was shot down. Perhaps the Red Baron literally took the secrets of who killed him to the grave. Number one, who was the woman in the uniform? We're still discovering photos and records of World War I, even after all this time. Some new photographs from World War I recently surfaced in the north of France. There are private photos and some of them show a young lieutenant dressed in what appears to be a uniform of the New Zealand military. Another photo from the set shows another member of the New Zealand military who was apparently promoted from lieutenant to captain during the time frame the photos were taken. It was with a woman sitting on his knee. The same person who was wearing the lieutenant uniform in the first photos. The background of the photos shows the Villa de Arcacia in France and the second man in the photo is known to be Captain Albert Arthur Chapman. Captain Chapman was an Australian serviceman serving in the New Zealand Pioneer Maori Battalion. Even though we know who the man is, no one has any idea who the woman is. The photos also raise a few interesting questions. The first of these questions is, of course, who is the woman? Historians speculate that the woman is a local French woman. The candid nature of the photo suggests there may be a romantic relationship between the pair, but Chapman is known to have returned home alone and unmarried when the war was over and the woman in the photo is wearing a wedding ring. There is a possibility that she was a friend of the captain, the wife of one of the other soldiers, or just a member of his family. At first it was believed that the uniform she was wearing may belong to her. This would make her one of the very first female military officers. This theory has been debunked, however, as there were no women officers at all in the British or New Zealand armies in World War I. Given how Chapman appears in the photos, and that he was promoted between the photos being taken, he must have known the woman for at least two years. They also clearly have a lot of affection for one another. Could these photos be a lonely memento of an ill-fated romance? Did the woman make it through the war, or did she fall victim to the Spanish flu epidemic that came after the war, like so many others? Was her husband standing just out of the frame of the photos? Does the fact that Chapman returned to New Zealand alone when the war was over mean something tragic happened to the couple? Records indicate that Chapman apparently never married, which makes these photos an incredibly intimate and personal look at the lives touched by war.